Hey guys, so I am trying out some new types of databases called graph databases. And I was wondering why would someone want to use a graph database versus SQL or NoSQL? And when would you choose it? When would it be faster? Because that's really what it comes down to is when is a graph database faster than let's say MongoDB or Postgres? And there's two really graph databases I am considering and trying out and that's ArangoDB and Neo4j and now there's this nice performance benchmark that ArangoDB did and so I thought I would show you guys this because I thought it was quite interesting to see when is Arango faster, when is Postgres faster, when is Neo4j faster, like each database when is it faster than the other one and this kind of gives you an idea of when you would want to choose one of them over the other. Now of course I'm sure this is a little biased because Arango is doing this um, and they're you know doing the benchmark so they know how to make their database faster. They might not know how to performance tune the other databases. These four databases might not get as much of a chance as Arango DB. But anyway, let's take a look at this. So I thought this was quite interesting. Um, they are choosing this machine 16 core machine with 60 gigabytes of RAM and one of the reasons for that is that Arango DB does not uh, work as well if all the data doesn't fit in memory see check this out right here it says Arango DB currently works best when the data fits completely into memory and the performance suffers when they actually have uh, it's bigger than memory so I wonder if how the other databases would do when you have basically bigger data than how much you can store in memory. But anyway, I thought that was interesting. So they definitely picked the machine to help their database already. But let's just dive into the results. So here are a couple different uh, ones that they ran. So single reads, writes, um, aggregating data together, neighbors, and some other different ones. These seem neighbors, neighbors with data, and shortest path. You can tell these are oriented towards queries that you would do in a graph database. But let's take a look at the results. Um, I thought these were quite interesting. And almost all of these, um, Neo4j performed worse than Arango um, DB, which they're both graph databases. So look, even just for single read, look how bad Neo4j is compared to Arango. And you can just see um, Neo4j is consistently more expensive here, here, here. The only thing it's beating Arango DB on is memory usage. And look at the memory usage of all these. I thought this was quite interesting as well. MongoDB um, has the least. Um, and then, so does Neo4j, doesn't have as much. So that's interesting. But just looking at this diagram here, why would I ever choose Neo4j over Arango DB? Arango DB looks like it destroys Neo4j for graph databases based on this. Um, so that's interesting. Um, occasionally Postgres gets better. And notice MongoDB does pretty well. Terrible on the single write syncs, but you don't have to do that, right? You can just do it non asynchronously. But like, I was surprised how well MongoDB stacked up. They seem like a good median. For aggregation, I don't, I don't know why they didn't do shortest path for um, Mongo. I guess you, I guess they're trying to store a graph in Postgres and store a graph in uh, the other ones using tab. Or, I don't know what this tab is versus JSON. I know you can store JSON data in Postgres, but I would take a look at these results. I'll have a link in the description below so you can check these out. This is a quite an interesting diagram, and they go more in depth with. Um, what they did to do the study and they actually have their um how they tested the databases put their code on github i believe right here but that's kind of interesting and personally i've been reading some of their articles and watching some different videos and it seems like graph databases the the, the one like why you want to use them or why uh where they're faster is when you have queries that are have, require a lot of relations like deep inferred knowledge and that would require lots of joins so for example Neo, Neo4j here has this sandbox that I was trying out 
and uh, you can just click on it and you can authenticate and you can get like this little web portal here and they give you some data which is pretty cool and you can take a look at it so this is what you can full screen this this is uh, Neo4j they have a little web thing um, where you can make queries run them and that sort of thing so here is a little query that I ran um, this they have like a little tutorial thingy this is for a movie graph and I just ran this one right here so we're looking for all the movies or not all the movies it's really you're trying to find who the directors are um, of the movies that Tom Hanks acted in so you can see Tom Hanks here acted in these movies and then you can see who directed each one of those movies um, so that's kind of interesting but like that sort of query would take several joins to do in Postgres or several aggregations in MongoDB um, I, I did learn you can do joins in MongoDB so several joins in that as well whereas with this um, look at the syntax too that's quite interesting for a graph their syntax with for Neo4j looks very interesting um, I've never seen anything like this before um, so that will be interesting to get used to but that side of queries where it takes a lot and is super expensive and SQL and MongoDB seem like where graph graphs really shine because this is pretty this is a cool interface too I really liked Neo4j to being able to visualize this you can wiggle around if we want to um, and you can kind of see hey look here's a, an edge where Tom Hanks acted in this movie and he directed it um, so you can see that's pretty interesting here they have multiple nodes pointing to this and you can just see what the table view of this would be kind of cool and then I think they have I don't know what this I guess this is the text table and here's the code this is the actual JSON response from the server here I was gonna say why didn't they prettify it here it is so this is what you get back if you actually did it and that's how they created this graph here and MongoDB seems very similar to RankoDB they have a, on their website a little side by side of the differences so and the syntax seems very similar so it might be pretty easy to learn RankoDB when you know MongoDB but I'm going to be checking out in the future ArangoDB and Neo4j, trying those guys out and seeing how I like these graph databases. I'm also very curious if graph databases are mostly, you know, you're going to be running queries like this that are more complicated and have edges all over the place. And this is a relatively simple query, but you can do more advanced ones. Are you also doing regular queries in this? Is this your main database? Or a company is using this? plus another database like Postgres or Mongo as their main and then they're using this to do more complicated queries and I'm curious how they keep those in sync if they have multiple of them or maybe they're just storing different data in each um, so I'll be learning more about these in the future and I'll be doing more videos on them as I learn them and as I check them out so stay tuned for that and let me know what you think of graph databases if you've tried them if you like them um, or if they just look super weird and obscure There's like some witchcraft queries you can come up with that look really cool Though I was watching some videos on Neo4j and I like this little this little graph thing you can make but I mean from the performance thing a Rango DB looks strictly better So we'll have to try it out when we're actually in practice and see what we what we get But that is it for this video guys. Thanks for watching